Good Friday morning to you. Well, uh, yesterday it rained, today it's dry. Well, that never dries up. I even drilled a hole in the uh, platform and it just don't drain. So, that's sudsy looking stuff there. Uh, well, I cleaned, <laughs> I ruined a pair of jeans, but I think I saved them. I have a bad habit of working without changing my jeans. Now you saw me with the work shirt on, this one here. But I, I'm too damn lazy to put my work pants on. <laughs> well, I've got them on today. Um, so I uh, took a bucket and some of that spray stuff that we used on the siding that my neighbor gave me, sprayed it and used a brush on it and then put some detergent in a four gallon bucket and I got the pants hanging over here and I think all the stains come out, I let them dry and run them through the washer because these are a good pair of jeans right here. So they were all stained with oil all through here and it looks like it took it all out because if my wife put them in the washer they would not come out. Huh. Yeah, my wife says all I got to do is look at grease, and it gets on me. <laughs> She's right there. All right, again, I've been watching the, uh, reading the comments, and I want to thank you all once again. Um, believe it or not, I just uncovered this tractor just about 10 minutes ago. Everything's wet here, and... Uh, so I'm going to put some stuff down and kneel down, even though I got my work pants on. I took a half inch wrench, and put it on that solenoid and pushed push really hard on it. No tapping with a hammer. And believe it or not, it turned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the gas tank and I'll try to pinch off the line but I might be able to leave it on and just set the tank over here because I'm going to have to remove all this again and I'm going to have to deal with that solenoid that's down there with that Mickey Mouse wiring arrangement that is in there because they got like a one of those clip leads like I use in my shop only it has no insulation on it so somebody used one of those and it's very hard for me to get in there but I'm gonna try later on now if I can move this over I won't need to pinch this off I got the solenoid loose all right but I tighten it back up again but I did get it loose another thing I did several of my viewers chimed in I ordered the um, $20 carburetor from the eBay link that my good viewer Bob N supplied me and I believe it was Carl I'm not sure some people have chimed in and said that that is the correct um, for this. I apologize if it wasn't Carl. I'm trying to remember so many comments I just can't do it but I appreciate all the comments that helped me with this and given me links and so forth. So uh, several people have said uh, they agreed that that is the correct carburetor and I've been watching other videos including not only the ones that my viewers are supplying me but ones that I've looked up to and I watched one that, uh, yes, there's a long bolt here, so you leave this part on and you remove this plastic piece here and you get this part off, so basically you've got just this middle part, which is the carb itself, all right? But the problem is going to be for me to, to unhook the linkage because they show you you gotta turn the carb a certain way to get it off. And that's where I run into my problems with the linkage, trying to get them Get them off is not a problem. It's trying to reverse the procedure and trying to get them on. 
and I'm going to uh, remove this solenoid and try to clean it and um, Don on my junk collector says I should be able to hear it click I don't know if I'm going to be able to hear it it's a breezy day which is good it's going to keep the bugs away from me I like a day like this it's not a good day to spray paint but it's a good day to work on the tractor or anything else and I'm talking too much once again. So, why don't we get started on this? Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is try to listen for the click of the solenoid as uh, Don of I'm a Junk Collector had suggested. So we'll try to do that, I'll try to reach over. Wait for that car to go by, because every little noise will drown it out. Now we've got a plane overhead. Let me see if I can hear it now. Can't tell. I thought I heard a click, but I only heard it once. Yeah, only once, and you try to turn it off and turn it on again, it don't click again. So, it's probably, probably clogged and bugged it up, you know? So, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this gas tank off. Pinch this line, because otherwise we're going to have gas coming out of the bottom of this thing. And then I get the solenoid out, I want to clean the solenoid, and then I want to try to spray some carb cleaner up underneath. I'm not going to attempt to take the carb bowl off because uh, there is, I cleaned it, there are only two screws, not four screws, holding the bowl in. And the one up here is easy to get at. I don't know if you can see that, I don't even know if we're in camera. Uh, but the one back here, no, and they, uh, according to the videos that I have seen on this, there are slotted screws, not Phillips, so um, there is going to be a problem with that because it feels like somebody tried to get these out. Whether they were successful or not, I don't know, but since I ordered the carburetor, I, ha I feel more confident if I break this, at least I got the replacement coming. And the link that Bob N. Um, sent me gave me for the eBay auction shows a solenoid so I assume it comes with one now if I get this to work I'll have a good spare carburetor and if it comes with a solenoid I'll have a spare solenoid alright so now uh, we'll disconnect the solenoid and haul ass up On some of the viewers, uh, the YouTube channels, they file down, made the wrench thinner. Well, that didn't seem to be a problem here. That fit right in there nicely. All right. I had to, I really took and really gave it my all, and I got it. I really cranked hard on it, and it. I did put PB Blaster in here on that video, and... Um, that might be why it's coming out now because I had originally thought well maybe somebody took this bowl off and put a nut on the other side of it and that might be why but that's apparently not the case so now we're going to lose some opening gas out of here but we've got to watch out for that little washer that's in there do not lose that they said my luck I will lose it I'm getting gas out of course Right. Here's the solenoid. Now I could probably test it. And there's the washer right there. It looks like a metal one. Right there. Seems to be a little sluggish. 
So I will clean that with carb cleaner or brake cleaner, whatever. I will put that over here. And what I'm going to do now is to spray up in there with carb cleaner and I'm going to have to wipe my hands down before I can shut this camera off. And I'll be dissolving all the membrane on the uh, start and stop button and everything else with all this solvent on my hands. I got my carb cleaner that I got at Walmart yesterday. And I'm losing gas like crazy out of here. Can't win. Well, there ain't that much gas anyways. Now let's see if we can get up in there. Yes, I got my goggles on. Maybe a very sluggish solenoid. Oh, maybe now it's might be a little better now. I don't know. Should really be putting. I got Harbor Freight disposable gloves. I need to put them on. Oh, yeah, it's freeing up. Even if this thing does work perfectly, which I doubt it will, I'll have a good spare carburetor for $20, plus the sales tax that they charged on it. I don't know if I'm in the camera, and I can't even see this. Where his nozzle's going here? Now the reason I want to take the gas tank off is because I want to try to work on that solenoid wiring sh fiasco that uh, somebody had done. I don't know whether it was the guy that I bought this thing from or what. I was told I paid too much for this and I honestly believe I do. I did. But when you need something you have to pay high price. When you don't need it, I'll guarantee you this summer, if the, I'll see one for $100 or $200 on the side of the road at a yard sale. That's just the way my luck runs. That seems to be... Now, what I'm going to do is hook this up and try to key on it. tell. I guess it can only go in one way. I can't see the fine. Oh, it goes in, so I guess that must be. All right, let's try the key. Yeah. Every time I, I don't know if you can see that. Let me, uh, Try to get you down a little better. Hang on. All right. I uh, I can see my hand in there. I can't see the solenoid, not with my bad eyesight. But I don't have reading glasses on. I have my goggles on, so. All right. Now I'm gonna turn the key on now. So I hope you can see that. Maybe turning it this way. Keys on, keys off. Keys on. Keys off. I can feel a solid click. Keys on, keys off. Keys on, keys off. All right. I think we'll give it another shot of carb cleaner up in the hole. I'm not sure where the float is on this, but we'll just. 
work it around. Obviously the needle valve and seat got to be okay because there was a YouTube video that I was watching last night. That's why I'm behind on my comments and getting on other people's videos and answering my own comments. I answered some this morning before I went out here because everything was very wet. Um, one guy had um, the float needle valve and seat was not sealing and got all the oil in, uh, gas into the oil. So a shutoff cock is needed because even if the needle valve and seat don't seat, the only gas you're going to get in your oil is from the carburetor bowl until that empties out. Okay? And maybe a little from the gas filter, I don't know. It's better than getting your whole gas tank capacity into your oil. As many years as I've had my Murray, I've never, never had problems with the needle valve and seat uh, leaking. So, uh, that's the story there, I think. If this runs perfectly, I'll have a good spare carburetor when it comes in from eBay, which is about the 24th or 29th of June when it's supposed to be here. So, uh, all right, that's working very well. Let's get it up into the hole here. say how tight to make it. Okay, I think that's pretty tight. You don't squeeze, squeeze your guts out on it. Alright, let's give it a listen. Okay, I can hear it click. Alright. Now, since I got this thing disconnected over here, before I even try to start it, I want to try to work on that solenoid. So we'll be back uh, on that starter solenoid with that Mickey Mouse wiring arrangement. If I can unbolt the solenoid and get it out from that cubby hole that's in there, I might be able to see what I'm doing. I want to go on the other side and see if there's a bolt that holds that solenoid to the wall. It's on the opposite side. Before I do that, I was looking in the book, and there's a term that I have never heard of before. I think it's referring to down in here. Zerk, Z-E-R-K. What the hell are, is a Zerk? I, I see that term all the time in the PDF file that Andrew sent me on this mower. And by the way, somebody else uh, gave me a link to the same exact manual that I already have, and I can't remember who it was. It was I found it this morning on that video. But what the heck are Zerks? And also, as I had mentioned before, does the tran axle, ha is it sealed? Does it need lubrication? That's a good question too. And once again, I'm gonna ask about this thing because the sun is over here now. What the heck is this? No, no. The mowing deck works. So, that's a good question. Okay, I got the gas tank off and um,
I want to try to clean this up a little bit more with maybe some detergent. I am not sure. I have to look on the book, but it takes so long to read through them things because it's not in a certain order. I'm not sure if you're supposed to grease that or what. There's something in the book about some fittings or something is nylon and they don't recommend using anything but silicone. I also noticed over here and just spotted it is grease fitting. Now my grease gun needs uh, another grease cartridge. I have several of them and they're both they're all empty. But I guess you grease that. But what the heck is this? Is this what they call a zerk? Does it come off or is it just a dust cover and I mean maybe it just keeps the grease from coming out and getting on your pants leg although your foot should be over here not over here um, or maybe it just keeps the grease from getting on you it looks like a, a good idea my Murray did not have that I just used WD-40 or whatever I had on, my, on hand to do that uh, this is all ready to go short of taking the bowl off and cleaning it properly but you know that could result in nothing working at all um, what I want to do here is fix this Mickey Mouse thing here with the clip lead you can see right there and while the Sun is hitting on this side of the you know into this side of the uh, tractor I want to try to be able to deal with that. It looks like that's a plug-in fitting there, but this is this is Mickey Mouse and taped. And there is a terminal right there. Okay. So all I got to do is go into my shop and get a, a, a terminal and put it on a piece of wire and then tape it to this. Yeah, the boot has been pulled back on, on it. I can see that right here. But it's a Mickey Mouse arrangement, and uh, sometimes I have to do Mickey Mouse type of work too. But <laughs> all right, let me uh, work on that. I'll probably do that off camera to save time. I put a terminal in there. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, I put heat shrink on it. There's two black wires and it was twisted together with a clip lead on it you know the clip from a clip lead and it wasn't soldered this is a, a crimp connector I put on there and put some heat shrink on it and it's okay this is a 20 amp fuse that's in there I don't know what it calls for but I think my Murray had a 30 but that's all right and everything else seems to be fine here so I think we can try to clean this up a little bit I don't know what to put for lube there, but I gotta put something in there. The steering gear. I really don't know, but I gotta try to clean this up a little bit more. I bought a brush that will get in there. So I'm gonna get some uh, some spray in there and clean it. I'll do that off camera. Um, what I'm gonna do, I don't know what you're supposed to put in here, but I don't know what the hell is underneath there. I feel something soft and cushiony under there. It's probably just dirt. But I don't know. I'm going to just spray WD-40 on the whole damn thing. And then after I do that, I got some white lithium grease and I'll put it into here. In this part here where it goes. And see so if I can shove some in there. But we're going to hit it with WD-40 first. If in doubt, use WD-40. It sprays out. It doesn't even spray. It's a can. It's a half a can. Thank goodness I got the good can left. I don't even think you can get these anymore. Yeah, that's all. That's what you need. Get some Yeah, it turns a lot easier now. A lot easier. That's all it needed. Okay. What I want to do is get some uh, get some grease in those grease fittings, but I got to go get a cartridge for my grease gun. I need it anyways when I work on the big van again. 
because whenever I take the wheel off, I always grease it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to wipe down the surface of that a little bit so I can get some white lithium grease in there. This is basically Metal Gear, so I'm sure this is not the area they're talking about with the Teflon uh, bearings. In order to get these wheels off, I don't know, they got a cap on here. That's if I have to take these tires down and have tubes put in them. Or test them. I was watching one of Terrell's videos on how to test the tires. Of course, I knew about that with the soapy water, but the right way to do it, you got to take the damn tire right off so you can lay it down and check the bead and hopefully it's not dry rotted if it is you just put a tube in it but they're flat again they're flat again I have to pump them up every few hours but hey it's the way it is all right if my camera don't fall over I put some lithium grease on the luber plate I had this in the cellar of the house we used to live in, where my workshop was in the attic. I would say this is about, oh, I bought these, in, bought this in the 60s, I believe. This is, uh, I believe it's lithium grease, it's white. It's what I use. I've used it in my shop too, but I've got a tube of it. It's white, uh, white grease. And if I don't lose the camera here, sitting on top of the engine cowling, uh, the stuff I do for you folks out there in YouTube land. All right. Let me just put it down in here. And there's a gear in there. If I can get it in, in there. And I banged in the tripod with my arm. Surprised I didn't knock it over. I really can't tell if it's going in so we just put a lot in there okay now let's you can't turn the wheel too much one of the tripod legs is sitting on one of the wheels all right I guess okay it ain't pretty. The main thing is, oh, it's so hard to get in here. All right. I think we're ready to put the gas tank back on. We'll do that off camera. Now, Don had suggested, uh, Don of, I'm a junk collector, had suggested cleaning back here. I guess this is the governor arm, but the one I was referring to is this choke here, which is now sticking again. This bobby pin thing here that's going back and forth, I still say it needs a return spring on it to hold it, because nothing else is, is connected to that. See this bobby thing, bobby pin thing here? This is what operates this this is what's sticking and I feel to put a spring here to here matter of fact there's a hole over here a, re a little return spring to go from here to here or somewhere in that area so that this thing will return now right now it's the throttle is all the way down to slow so when we pull it up we choke it right okay this is not affected uh, as far as the choke is concerned, it does move, yes. But now the choke is closed again. So definitely need a spring on this. All right. This is separate from this, although this moves with the thing. There is nothing to return this. It's freewheeling. It looks like it could have a spring in here, but where it would connect to, I don't know. But this butterfly needs to have a return spring.
What we're going to do is we're going to spray it with carb cleaner. I got my goggles on. Don had said to clean this good. It's still sticking. Now I'm, I'm going to put a return spring on that. That definitely needs a spring. It probably had one that probably came off. It definitely needs a spring in there because this is going to stick. If I go to use it, start it up right. All right, get it started. Then I bring the throttle halfway down. The choke is still closed. I, this is not going to run right until I put a return spring in. It has to have a return spring. So. Um, that is the way it has to be. See? Because right now, wherever you move it, see? and now I had sprayed in here before. We'll do it again. It could be gummed up, but if it has a spring on it, you won't have to worry about it being gummed up because the spring will override the gumming, gummed up problem. needs a return spring. This is the governor, I guess, from what I understand. Yeah, that's the governor right there, okay? This is not the governor, this is the choke, and this is what I was referring to, needing a spring. From here to the frame. I'm gonna see if I can locate a spring and I will put that in, because I know what's gonna happen. We're gonna blame the carburetor for the choke sticking. See? Choke is on, lever's all the way up. All right, let's put the lever down. This time the choke moved because I sprayed it in there. Okay. I could probably take this off to get a better spray in there. I'll probably try to take this thing off. From what I've seen in YouTube videos, there's a long screw that goes in holes here there's two nuts here and then you probably pull this hose off here which looks easy to do matter of fact I'm getting uh, trying to move that I was trying I got a little gas out of there or a carb cleaner one or the other because I can see it sitting in there okay all right let me take that off I'll get right back all right I took this off this hole is clear. Gasket's still on there. Cleaned it up. And see how it sticks? Now there's a close examination. That has nothing to do with the governor. That's a, a rigid part of the frame here and this thing just slides in it. This needs a return spring. Definitely needs a return spring. But now that I got this thing off, I can spray more carb cleaner in there. But what it needs is some oil on the lower bearing here, here and here. But I'm gonna give it a shot of carb cleaner right now. Back this camera off, I got my glasses on. Still sticks, so it needs oiling. It, it wouldn't be a problem. You had a return spring on it, bring it right back. So I am going to definitely put a spring on that because this thing is not going to work. You know, it's not going to work unless it has a return spring. All right, we'll bring it up. The, let's bring it out here again. All right, we got the handle down. Bring it up. She's on choke when I normally start. Let's say I got it started. I bring it down. Halfway, still nothing. All the way down to idle, choke is closed. Definitely, no question about it, it needs a return spring. I will be putting one on. So we're gonna need a spring on that, otherwise this thing is not gonna run. It's gonna be on choke. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the gas tank back in. And uh, there's not much I can do about this 
uh, cowling here. We've struggled with that before. But before we put the uh, gas tank back on, we got to put this back on. And we're going to shoot some uh, oil in there. Yeah, we're going to shoot some oil on that butterfly. I'll use the, um, the zoom oiler for that. All right, I got my zoom spout oiler. And uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to oil this bobby pin here. It seems to be dragging. A little better, not much. Because I can't, don't have my damn reading glasses on. I can't tell if I'm putting too much on or not. The damn glasses are always in another location when I need them. Now I'll get some oil down in the car body and on this little, it looks like a little spring on, on the shaft here. Yeah, gonna definitely put a spring over here, no question about that. Because if I don't do it, it's not gonna run. You know, that should just pop right back. Because the throttle is down to idle, all the way down. I'll try to soak up some of them ex that extra oil that's in the bottom of the throat of the carburetor and uh, clean this guy up All right, now, now comes the fun. Left-handed. At least I'll know how to get the carburetor out. The biggest problem is going to be that linkage. All right, I got that nut on. Like I say, there is a, you can't see it on the camera, but there is a, a coil spring sitting vertically on the shaft, so it's possible that spring could be disconnected. I'll never, I can't see that. It's impossible for me. So putting a spring in here is the answer, and I will do that today. So I have a feeling I'm going to have to kick this open manually, reach under there if I can with the cowling on, and flip that open once it starts. So I think I cleaned this up as much as I could as what 
Don says, I think we'll just get some oil down in there. Probably won't hurt. Probably won't hurt. Good for it. This uh, bottle cable here, a little oil on that. All right. But this damn thing here is definitely sticking, so. It's clouding up. I bet you it's going to rain again. All right. All right. Okay. We'll put the cowling back on. We'll put the gas tank back on. We'll do all that off camera. Stuff here. I'm going to. It was suggested to try it without the air cleaner. Well, I will do that. We'll see how she runs. All right. Let's see, we're in the, should be in the parking brake. Somebody had mentioned about the seat. I never touched it. It's supposed to be shutting off when you get off the seat. Well, this is the way I got the tractor. And the seat has nothing to do with the solenoid, of course. All right. Now the clutch is all the way down. It's still on. Uh, the lock is still on, so. Shouldn't have to touch that. Gonna have to get off the seat in order to hit that uh, choke. Here we go. Give the gas time to go in. is on. Now the choke is off. The choke is open. way down to the lowest point right now. Now I'll move it up. The last time I did that it stalled out. It's in the middle where the little arrow says this is the position you leave it in for mowing grass. but not up to choke. Right. So where you want to leave it 
is in the middle where it says to mow the grass. Don't move it up any higher than that. housing with a filter is. I thought it would be drawing in, but it's probably from the fan of the motor. All right, I'm going to shut it down. It tells you to turn it all the way down to low. And then turn the key off. Okay, we're still recording okay. Now I'm gonna to try to restart it again. I probably won't need choke. I don't think. sitting in the middle. If you push it up any higher, it won't run right. It don't really make any difference. It don't speed up. So in the middle is where you want to run it according to that dash dashboard statement that's on there. All right. Anyways, I got it running. It restarted just fine. Uh, as you heard, it surged quite a bit, but after it warmed up, it seemed to be all right. And I guess, and the solenoid is connected. So uh, that new carb that I uh, ordered would be very good to have in case something happens to this because that's the only way you can really fix these things is to replace the carb, and I might have to do that because that choke is, uh, you know, the, it, the spring that's sitting on top of it, as I tried to explain to you, I couldn't do a close-up of it, but I'll put a return spring on that, <clears throat> and, um, That should be good for this, although it did open up before. Also, on one of the videos, I found out that this here is not an Allen, but it's a, a T40 Torx. So apparently that's original. This isn't. But this is the one where the um, half the housing is broken off. The thread where it threads into the uh, engine. Uh -uh. And, of course, this will not line up. I tried it again off camera. So... I'm not going to worry about it at all. I'm more worried about these things leaking here. I guess once you use these type of clips, and that's what's on, that was originally on there. So that's what I bought at my hardware store, but it's no damn good. The, they, the, the, you can't use the regular pliers on them. Uh, I can't. Sometimes they grip and they, they work, other times they don't, and I was struggling with it, trying to get it on, and I bent it all to hell, or, or made it weaker, I guess, Put, trying to get it back on the, on the line so I can slip this over and then push it down, and then it wouldn't go down. So, anyways, we'll go back to the good old-fashioned uh, screwdriver type. But I won't get them at my hardware store. He wants a dollar a piece for them things that fit on the on these uh, type of hoses right here. They are very expensive for this stuff over there. It's supposed to be a true value hardware, but it's not a true value. It's a high value. <clears throat> but sometimes, you know, for a little item, you get it. Um, you know, it's better than running all the way 10 miles down to um, Harbor Freight and so forth. I usually get my WD-40 at Harbor Freight, 
with a 20% off coupon. But I like the old style. I like this one. I don't remember where I got this. But these are the good ones. You know, these are no damn good. I mean, the nozzle's a good idea. But uh, the can only goes down. It's probably got about where my thumb is. Don't put that much stuff left in it. It's just coming out like in a mist or something. It's not really spraying good. This one does. So, <clears throat> when I go down there, I'll get some more. I may make a video after I get the spring in. It got to have that return spring uh, because otherwise it's going to be a, a SOB and, you know, trying to mow with it. Now, this time it opened up okay. Um, <clears throat> maybe because the air is coming into the carburetor and it helps push the butterfly open. That could be. Um, that might be why it it didn't need to be pushed open like it did when I was demonstrating it with the engine turned off. So that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it, as others would say. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> okay, thank you for watching. I uh, will be giving you more videos as time goes on and who knows I might even if it doesn't rain today and I get time I may go out that I don't need to cut any grass but I may just run it around the yard a little bit and then I got to figure out what that bracket is that's underneath this uh, mowing deck that's just loose under there doesn't seem to do anything <clears throat> all right so, I, once again, I appreciate all your helpful comments and links and so forth it's, and to the videos and things. It's been very helpful. And it appears that that solenoid is working good. But when I get the replacement in, it's supposed to come with a solenoid and I'll have a good spare um, that I can use. Still surges, but I'm not going to worry about the surging because everything I own surges. Take care.